Welcome to Redis Guide. We are going to use Redis with React App. We are going to see how to store and get data using Redis. And you will be able to create your React App using Redis. So let's get started. Support, subscribe and like. Alright guys, so what do we need to do? We need to go to the React Create App. So this is the website. And we need to run this command in our computer. So I'm going to copy the command. I'm going to open PowerShell. And on the desktop, I'm going to create uh, this project. I'm going to call it my app. And I'm going to hit enter. Now it's going to take some time. It's going to create the application. And if you need to run this command, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed. So install it before running this command. Now it is working and we have our folder generated on the desktop files right now there. I go back to the PowerShell. Okay, so our app is up. Now all we need to do is go inside the My App. So I set My App and then we need to say npm start. And it is going to run on localhost port 3000 so we can see that our application is coming up okay so our app is up now what I want to do is go on Google and search for Redis so when you search Redis you need to make sure you put npm so that we get the package we go there and then there is the command and there is all the documentation like what maybe how to use it so I'm going to copy this command because we will be using this package and I go back to our uh, terminal, our PowerShell, I'm going to install this as well. Okay, now we need to rerun it. So if I go back here and here now I'm going to go to the page. So here what I'm going to do because currently we just have this local, we don't want it. So we want to work with the uh, code. So here I go to source and in here react, everything is coming from here. So if I go to app, so if I go to index.js, you will see that app is called here and there is index CSS called here. Now we don't need this. I don't need web vitals. I'm going to clean this file up a bit. I go to index.css. We don't need it. We moved it already. So if I go to app.js, here we can remove everything. Okay, we have app.css and we can make it empty. So whatever we have here, because we are not using any CSS. So you can see that we don't have any error. We have our app running. Now using Redis is advisable to use from server side instead of using the client side. So we need to also you run uh, the express for the server. So what I'm going to do, uh, we can uh, stop here and I'm going to say npm install express. You can uh, install Redis as well in the same command, but we already installed Redis, so I just install express. So we can just say this and it's going to install it. Okay, it is installed. I'm going to run it again and beam start. So we are back to our project, go to console. We shouldn't have any header there. So I'm just going to check here. If you see any error, just refresh the page and you will uh, see that all uh, is fine. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to go back here and we need to create a file. So here I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it server.js. And this, okay, now we have Redis and Express both here. I'm going to say constant app is equal to express like this. All right, this is going to create the connection now and it's going to create a server for us and we need to run that server on some particular port. We are running our app on server three, port number 3000. We need to make a server on a different port. So, so what I'm going to do, we're going to define the port as well as a constant uh, port. And I say is equal to, let's take 3001. You can give any port number, that doesn't matter. 
now what we want to do we want to create a redis client so we say here create uh, a redis client how do you do that constant and i'm gonna give it this type a camel case name so we can see that what exactly it is redis and then dot create client there it is now i just got the suggestion of this create client you notice that it came up when i, I was typing create for that suggestion or working with the react or redis you just need to go to the uh, extensions here's first search for react when you search for react you get this es7 you need to install it as well as this es7 other than that search for redis when you search for redis the first one just install this package this is going to give you uh, the suggestions when you uh, use redis so that's going to make your life easier let's complete our server component so this server file what i want to do i want to create an endpoint that endpoint where we will be working and we will be getting data from so what i do i say we already created app so we say app dot get and i'm going to pass here an endpoint we can call it api and then you can give anything you want to call here so i say uh, get data from redis okay this is our endpoint and it is going to return us request and also response so what do we want to do okay here we want to get the data so we are going to use the redis client at this moment i'm just showing i'm setting things up so i'm not able to show you but uh, bear with me i will show you how all things fits together and how it all works here i'm going to say redis client dot get now redis client works with key value so you will give like for example name and then the value of it so we will need to set a key so here you can pass your uh, key so whatever key you want to pass here so let's say here uh, custom data is my key all right and then i say here header if we get or data if we get then what do we want to do and here now here we can put an if condition if we get error then what do we want to do here so also in that case what do we want to do i also want to see the console.log response so and the response what we can do we can convert the response into json using like this and here we can do whatever we want to do for now i'm just gonna comment it we will only see the response once we get them in console log i save the file and here what do we want to do i want to go uh i want to listen so here because this port we need to run server on so here we say app dot listen so we are telling use that port and here is the port comma and here we are going to put here notification console dot log what we are saying server is running on and http colon slash slash localhost all right and then you can pass it like this port now when you need to pass uh, data like this you need to make it string using backtick not double quotes like this now it will work okay so let's see i need to run this file to run the server and uh, currently we haven't set up the ready server because we need to get the data from this custom data we haven't created this key and data here so we will do that too so currently if i i go to powershell again and here oh i closed it by mistake so what i do here cd desktop and then i have my app and there i say ls 
I have the server file inside source, so I need to go inside it and I need to say node then server.js. Okay, when I run this file, we get this error. Now, either we need to change the imports to require or we need to change some further settings according to uh, because we are using the ES uh, latest format and we need to. Um, configure things accordingly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to package.json. You need to add one type and what type going to be? It's going to be we are saying it. Now make you back to the uh, here and try to run it. And this time we get the uh, server is running on port uh, 3001. So great. So as the server is running, what we can do, we can check it. All you need to do is localhost and then go 3001 and we cannot get right now because uh, because if I go to I going to close this file and we have here all right so so currently we have in our server file this that when we visit this endpoint we are getting from Redis something and then we are console logging it but we don't have Redis server there so it's not going to work. So what we can do, we can simply right now see what we, uh, if we, this endpoint works. So what we say here, response.json, and I want to return some data. So I say here data, and I say, let's call that data123. So what I'm saying is, I just want to check if our server is going to work when I go to node server.js so here it should return this data so let's see how it works so what we need to do go back to the here and we need to run our server now server is running now if i go here in localhost 3001 we are saying api get data from redis and i'm going to the same url you can see here now if i hit here enter uh, we get JSON and data is one to three. So from the server side, we are fine. Now the thing is Redis. So we want to get data from Redis. So let's set that so that instead of showing one to three, we show the data that is coming from Redis. Okay, for the Redis, we need to go Google again. And here I say Redis. I'm using Windows, so I'm gonna look for uh, Windows. So install Redis on Windows. You can do the same for Mac OS. Here we have the documentation and you need to follow it according to your operating system. You could go for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows as well. Now let's see it. Redis is not officially supported by Windows. However, you can install Redis on Windows for development by following the instructions. To install Redis on Windows, you will first need to enable WSL2. So let's go inside it. Here we have a command, just copy that command. We need to go to the PowerShell and here open the new tab. Here I'm gonna paste the command and run it. And it is going to install the WSL if it is not there. And here you can see it's doing it. So it is installing Ubuntu, which is it's going to use it. And if we go back and see the documentation here, now here you can see the WSL2 lets you run Linux binaries natively on Windows. So using Linux, it's going to make it run. And uh, you need Windows 10 version 2004 or, or higher or Windows 11. So be careful about that. If you are on other operating system, you can follow the instructions accordingly. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to wait basically. Okay, I got an error here. So it says Ubuntu has been installed. All right, guys, so you need to go into the Microsoft uh, store. You can install their Ubuntu. So if you go there, you will get, this is for Windows users only, basically. For other users, you will not have this issue. So here, when you open it, it opens inside a PowerShell like this so it might ask you to set the username and password so do that uh, for, for the first time otherwise you will get this 
now I have it open and running here. So if I go back to the instructions here, back here, we need to go. Now, when we have the Ubuntu, it says install Redis. So once you're running Ubuntu on Windows, you can follow the instructions. So what I want to do, I want to follow the instructions because I click it. And then let's go to the sudo amp get update. You should have, you should be connected to internet. Type this command completely as well. Go back now and install Redis. Go back here, you will see the lastly start the Redis. So we need to start Redis like this. And connect to Redis is using this Redis CLI. And then we can connect using Redis. Okay. So now let's see. So go back here and we are done. So let's say sudo service and here I start the Redis. Okay, it is started. Now we need to type Redis CLI. So Redis dash CLI. Okay, I hit it. And you can see that I have the port number as well as the IP address. Okay, and it's kind of the same. So it says yeah, type ping here, it will return Pong, and it is doing that too. Right, we need to set custom data. Uh, let's set a name, I would say. So I say here name, uh, and as, uh, if you make change in server.js, let's say I did it. So I need to go back to the here where we are running our server. Control C to stop the server and then run it again because then the change is going to be recognized. Now it is expecting name. However, we need to remove this portion, uh, these, these two lines. So, okay, we will do that first and let's set the value. So we go back to the Ubuntu here in the Redis client. There we want to say set and I want to say, okay, here it is suggesting us key and value. So we want to say name and then uh, going to be value and let's call the value to be uh roger okay so that roger is the name okay we got it so we have uh the name set so if i say here get name and all right i hit it i get the roger so now this is running minimize it it is there your ready server is up your uh, node server is up so what do we want to do i want to remove this portion and i want to get this data all right that's that's the goal here so i save it and go back to the our server here we need to restart it and hit it okay now when we go back to here let's see what happens so hit it and this time we get unable to connect. Now, the reason we get unable to connect, we need to configure it so that our this server, uh, okay, it stopped because we got an error, because we need to make it talking to this Ubuntu, okay? And guys, to, to make it talk, we cannot get in the error. So we go to the, uh, here, where we say the create client. Here, we need to pass some configuration. And here, first is going to be host which is going to be, in our case, if I go to here, we have, this is our host. So I'm going to pick this and see if it works for us. So here I put it, then I say put comma, and then I say port. And now when I say port, uh, port is 6379. So that's six three seven nine all right now now let's save it and go back to server and run it now our server is running again and refresh it now we see if we get it okay so it's not working and uh, i'm using the postman now to uh, doing the same thing so instead of going to browser we can use postman so you can see here, I'm just setting the same URL. So currently if I do, it's, we do not get anything. And what I want to do here is I want to put here uh, legacy. Actually not like this. It's going to be inside curly brackets and then legacy. 
uh, mode and I want to set to true okay this is the first thing I want to do then afterwards what we want to do we want to get this redis client and we want to say here redis client dot connect and once it is connected only then we want to do something so what we can do we can say here await till it connects once it is connected we want to do something and then inside it we can run our code so here like this okay so this app connect everything whatever we have here i'm just going to cut it and put it inside here and now we want to try it if it works all right so I save it now if i see here uh so our server is not running so we need to run it again node server is up now i go to postman and i hit this time again and uh, so now i updated the file i'm console logging the data to see what happens and basically it and if we have data here we are receiving it as result data and rest cells should be fine so we are first getting it from the endpoint and this all happens in after the connection legacy mode uh true and yeah so we need to go back to the uh not here we need to go and restart the server so stop it and i uh, rerun it now here we go and send the request and we get the result uh, data and if i go back to here now you can see it roger roger that is coming from the console log we did so we don't need it we can remove this console log all right so that is not required now you can know that we get it a uh, name right so if i go to ubuntu in windows uh, so i go here i'm already in here so if i say get name i'm getting roger so if i say here set and uh each right and i say 23 it says okay then i say get age it returns me 23 now this time i can get age here and save of course we need to restart the server so and then go back to postman and here send this time the result is 23 so we are getting it straight from the uh, ready server and that is successfully fine now what we want to do we want to uh, make it work from our application itself i don't want to set values here and uh, now we're going to run few commands straight in the linux command line to just understand how our disk works and then we will set values as well so here what i want to do i want to say uh, del and then i want to say name when i hit it it says integer one that means it is true and it is successful so if i say here get name it says nil and you can pass it like that as well it's nil because name is deleted so if i say here get age we get 23 but then i say del age so i'm just deleting the age it says okay we deleted it now if i try again get age it's nil again because that value is also gone now redis stores inside memory so you get all the data very quickly and fast that's that's the main feature of redis is and now what we want to do here is now we can work with the lists here as well so for example if i say here l push and then this is key and element so what i want to say here is uh player and then the element it's going to be uh roger okay i hit it integer one all right now now to show uh, this the list we have this list now player which has this value roger so if i want to show this i will say here player okay and uh 
uh, actually not like this, it's going to be L range flare and then use a start and stop. So I want to start from zero and I'm saying stop is minus one, get me all the values. So when I hit it, it returns Roger. So what I say, I say L push and I say this time player and I say uh, Tom. Okay, so this is the uh, person, another player I added into player. So if I go back and run the previous command where I'm saying get me all values, it should get me both. So this time it has Tom and Roger. Now this L uh, sorry, L push is left push, so it is adding uh, here. If you want to add after Roger, you will be doing uh, R push. So R push, and here I want to say Smith. Okay, enter. Now then you go and you say, uh, all right, get me all values. And this time you get Tom Roger Smith. Smith comes after Roger. Do you get the idea? Now you can say list range like this and then you say player whatever list you have then you say okay I'm gonna get from one and I want to get uh, one or uh, two till two okay so we get Roger so it's a zero a one and two so zero is uh, not included because we said from one and we get a Roger and Smith here so this way you can get the values according to uh, your needs. Now this is quite basic example. We won't be in real life replication storing this kind of data. We will be storing a bit of complex data, so, you know, for example, JSON objects. So let's see how we can do that. All right. So here, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna say uh, completely. Uh, I'm gonna set a value. And I want to say uh, it's going to have some user data. Okay, so I'm going to call it users. And then I'm going to paste here a JSON string. So you can say name John is 30 city New York. So you can store this kind of JSON. You can have a lot of data uh, depending on your needs. When I hit it, it says okay. Nice, I get users and we get that data. So you get the idea, you can dy dynamically put the data this way and use it. And this can be very helpful. Now you already create, uh, created players, so I want to delete it. So we simply say uh, tell and then players. So uh, it was player, sorry. So now here integer zero is false. That means unsuccessful. And integer one is success. That means uh, we have successful uh, deletion there. Now, if you say uh, we use these, all right? So what I can do if I use the same command now and run it, it says empty array because we just deleted it. Now we can also store sets. So uh, in here, what are you gonna do here in the way we store the user? I want to store more values. So I'm going to copy this command and paste here. Now I'm going to say here simply Mike and rest all stays the same. I hit. And this time, if I get users, it is going to give me Mike because it just updated it. Now, the thing is, when you are setting it, it's setting that value to that particular JSON object you're passing. The same way you passed here, we passed here, Mike. So now it is this. Now we're going to see how you pass multiple, but the thing is, you need to have to make sure that if you are setting it and setting it again, it is going to overwrite. So be careful about that. And, uh, now, for example, if I want to have users, uh, multiple users. So I rather use list than this. So what I do first, I say here, Dell, and I say users. It's integer, so we get that users is deleted, all right? 
So if I say get users, now, nice. So what are you gonna do? We did push uh, here players, so we say players. Okay, so we say L push, and I again call it players, and we're gonna copy this and then paste here like that and I hit enter then again I go here and I say this time it's going to be Mike Mike is 32 enter now we have two elements there so we can see here L range and it's players 0 2 minus 1 so you get the idea we get both the values so this way you will uh, be able to fetch your data according to your needs you can do that now i want to get rid of it del players so it's it's gone now okay we can store hash values as well in uh, redis so let's see an example of that too so here what i'm going to say is a hm set okay and then I want to say user one, and then I want to give this user a name. So I say name. Let's say this name is Roger. Okay, and then I set age as well. So we are already working with Roger. So let's give him uh, age. Let's give him number thirty, and then city, just the way we did previously, and. Uh, it's going to be string new york okay now hit enter and uh, i added the column here before roger sorry about that so we need to remove that there going to be space enter it says okay now let's see uh to show it we say h get all okay so it's gonna get us uh sorry we need to pass user and the key so we pass the user and the key we get name roger uh age 30 and city new york so you get the idea how it's, st it's storing the content now if you don't want to get all of the data in that case you will say edge get let's say user one and what do you want to get is name right so when i hit this i get the name roger we already said one user let's set another so i go back to the command where we added this user so user one now it's a user two this time i say here uh, tom and tom is 32 and new york is fine so i hit it now we're gonna get the edge get all and when i hit e, this says user one then we say two here user two so you get uh, the user's data so you if for example in your application if you have user's data you're storing one by one you can have this way uh, storing in your um, redis so that you can get based on the user uh, index so here we have a key getting set uh, one and two and based on that you can get that particular user's data in no time now if you want to see all the users you can say scan and then you say zero and then match and in match uh, because we have user and then column we instead of putting number we're going to put here a star and this pattern is going to match and it is going to get us all the users so we have user uh, one and user two so that uh, that's all that's all how you can see how many users you have and you can deal with your data now let's add one more user so what I do I say here uh, and a user three and this is going to be uh, Smith And I added it. Okay, now we scan users. We have three users now. Now, before wrapping it up, I want to show you one more thing. That is basically when you go to and search uh, 
on the Redis documentation. Here you will notice that there is uh, there is Redis Insight. When you go there, you can download this Redis Insight for your system, for your Windows or uh, whichever computer uh, operating system you're using. So I already downloaded it, and uh, you can even search straight away Redis Insight and download simple. So you will get to the GUI which you can download. Okay, so I have downloaded it already, and it does basically what is that you get the idea how things are working. So if I go to databases, I have the one connected that we were working with. So if I go inside it, you can see the configuration and stuff as well as the data. So here we have name set currently and uh, there is no value so far. So if I go back to to the Reddish uh, CLI, here I see set name and then I say here, let's say Smith and here uh, I should have it. So let's see. And you can see that name Smith is there. I'll push and then you call all players. And then I say here, Roger. Okay, integer one. Now, when you're here, click here and you just need to refresh here. You don't need to change the screen. Now we have players. I clicked here and there is a Roger because I added the Roger. So if I want to edit it or delete it so i can do that from here too so if i delete the value from there here now if i say if i want to see zero minus one right and that's what it was we have empty array so we just deleted it from here now we also have user uh, one value set you can see that in, uh, roger h as well as the city, the user, you know, user three, and this is hash, and uh, the name is string, and the one we set, this one. If I go back here, wait, re-add it, and go here, and refresh. So we have a list of player. There we have player. Now let's see how we can set data. So if I go here, and here we have this function. So what I want to do, I just want to copy this code and I'm going to paste it right here. And now I'm going to call it uh, ABA app.post. So now the, you know, this is we're going to use to uh, update the data. So what I want to do is that I'm going to remove this portion. So we are using the get method here, the same way we can use set method here. So I is going to say Redis and uh, Redis client because that's what we are calling it. Now we say set here and after that we pass the values. So first we need to be the key and I will say here, um, let's say name or I change it, I, say, I just say player. And then second is the value. I say new player just to see how things work. Or I can set an object. So what I say here, I simply call here player. Now we don't have this player, so I say here constant. And I call it player, which is an object. Give it an ID of something. And then you say user name. Uh, let's call here Roger. And then we call email. So some at email.com. All right. So now once we have this, this is we are passing and setting it as a player. Now I want to see how it works. So there is one more change we need to add so here we have get data for redis here you change this endpoint to 
set data so that we are setting now basically we need to restart server so here let's go back and restart it and we get an error straight away the reason is quite simple we don't need to connect to the VM we simply can disconnect here and inside this connect we can call it like here all right now go back to the file here and right now it is up okay there is a mistake uh, let's correct that the player where we are passing to set the value we need to set it to uh, a type string so we need to say here json dot and we say stringify now it will pass it as a string and then the value will set just fine so as we I edited this file we need to read on the server and this time and also uh, what we want to do is uh, when we are setting it just like this we need to now we need to do it this way but also I need to do it is I'm gonna copy this get method I'm gonna paste it here now I'm gonna change it to post age will be player second argument going to be the value that we are setting so the value we are setting is player constant now we need to make it a string so I say JSON dot stringify and I put this player inside it the rest all stays the same if we get the error we are just gonna see the console log otherwise we're gonna see the data this console log uh, yeah so far so good let's see so what i do i go back here and i run it again now go to the postman and hit send preview okay so we have adder go back my mistake this needs to be set and rest all is fine so what we're gonna do we're gonna cut it and run it again postman and set this time result is okay now I go to the redis here and I refresh now you will see there we have player where we have value ID one two three user Roger email sum at email dot com. So if we go to code, this is the value we are passing. So that's what it is adding. So through code you can set it like this. Now I want to see how we can use it in React component. So go back here. First thing first, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna search for Xeus and we need to install Xeos so let's do that so here is Xeos I go to here and stop the server I'm in my project so here dot dot one folder out where we have known modules I paste the command and run it okay Now it is installed. I go back to the source where we have our file. I run the node server back again. That is on. Now, now I need to up the app as well. So I go back to the bash again. Open a new window. Here I say CD desktop, and we need to make the uh, my app, which is the React app, and here npm start. So that we have uh, um, our React app up. So if I go here, you can see localhost 3000. Here we gonna load our app. Now we have a error here. So we are getting like uh, in the index.js. Go back there. We have app here. Just put .js and save, and we get our hello. All right. Now what I wanna do? We're gonna go back here. Actually, uh, 
inside this app.js we need to do some stuff first thing first i'm gonna use and inside here i'm gonna say abi slash the uh, if i go to server js this is the endpoint i want to go for go here and paste it okay now dot then get down here and here response and then here i want to say console dot log response all right and this is going to be like this i'm going to save it so when so what i did i simply added this as in get and our server if you remember it's running on port 3001 so here we defined it that we need 3001 so that's re that's the reason uh, we need to use that port so here i'm saying 3001 api i get data from redis so here we are getting the data and then simply i'm saying that response to data and whatever the result is uh, we need to show you so this is so far the code is now what do we want to do um, when we go here and refresh uh, we get an error course missing of origin so for to deal with this error we need to install a package which is course package so if I go here in X years and I search for course, here it is. And here is the command. So we need to install this. So we can uh, we can set uh, the origin. So here simply I go to command and where we have the project running, which is here. So I say here, yes, stop it. And inside my app, actually not that. Uh, npm install course so we install it and once it is installed we see npm start again okay now we say npm start all right now it should work so i go back here and uh, i'm going to close all the browser except the last one so what do we need to do to make it to work we need to go back to code editor and here we need to say uh, index actually no in server now here on top we say import course okay and from course like this and after that here we say app dot use course like that now the course is a function so make it like this so now as we have did in the server file we need to uh, restart the server go here here we go and C, control C, then load server again. Server is now running. Go back here. Refresh. And here, let's see what we're getting. Or the result is so far null. Now, even in the postman, if I go there, and you can see get data from Redis, get, and when I hit it, I still get null. That means we are firing and getting data correctly, but the data is not going to be right so what we want to do here is that first inside here uh, refresh and in our code let's see what we are getting so we, when we say get here uh, we are passing this right we are saying player and we are setting uh, sorry uh, we need to go here and here we are saying get and we say get this this goes to server which is this endpoint which goes to here which is age so if i go to insight you will see we don't have any age so if i say player so we can get the player so let's say 
I want to get the layer. Okay, now I'll restart the server. And now if I go back, refresh, and go here, response, we still have nothing. Uh, sorry about that. I just made a spelling mistake. Be careful about this because it may needs to match with the name that we have set in Redis. So now go here and restart the server again and then refresh and go and there you go result we have here also if i go to postman we will be able to see that too so we have the result all right now based on because we are getting it on the component right so you can have some kind of state so for example here i say uh so I'm gonna first of all I'm gonna call you state, use state here. Then here I'm gonna say okay constant user data, and if you know you need to put it like this. First is user user data, then is set. Pass like empty string here. What I say, I copy this, and instead of I set it like this. Okay, so we have user uh, data now what i do here in our component here i can say all right and remove it all and here i show the data so i say if there is data and we can show something so here let's let's make it a div just to keep the things simple. And here, I say JSON. Actually, I simply put it here like that. Just like, uh, you need to put it like this. And this goes away, otherwise it's, it's gonna be string. So if I go back here and refresh, now you can see that. Now, you might want to show each and every information with style that's totally up to you like for example i say here uh, we have three things so i just remove this one and now i save it okay refresh so in our code here we are, we are setting it i just want to say json dot parse okay it is going to make it that uh, json format proper refresh and now you get the id name and email so this is just a wonderful point we get here the data in here now let's go back to the postman and if i hit it it's the same tell me seconds we get this data okay now before ending this video i want to show you the performance difference so if i go to a website which is json placeholder so here we go to basically uh, what I want to do, I want to get an endpoint. So we have an endpoint here. So this is the data we're going to get. All right. So this is the endpoint. Actually, let's go down. And we have like this, this many endpoints. So let's, let's get the users, 10 users. So this is the endpoint. I'm going to copy this endpoint and go here. And what we want to do is here I'm going to create another our request which is going to deal with the get and set bolt so that we can work this code will be available for you to use so you can have the access to it that's why i'm not going to change the above code i'm just going to make this one a new uh, way to fetch data so what really i want to do here is i say get set data simple make it camel case get set data and here i'm going to say uh, users okay this in stringify is going to be users and here we don't have users so we say here uh, constant users which is going to be axios dot get and here i'm going to pass this endpoint 
All right, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna paste it right there. Here, what I wanna do basically, I'm gonna go above. Here we're getting the get. So I'm gonna copy this code. Go inside here. And I'm gonna say something like this. So here we say, uh, we are returning the data, right? So if the data here, even in this condition, I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put here. If data, then what do we wanna do? We wanna return the data uh, just like that. So I cut it and paste it here. Otherwise, if we don't have data, then I wanna call the set. So I put it here. Now we are setting users and we are getting users. So you get the point. Let me check if Redis has users, then return that. Otherwise, set the users. And then when we set the users, we're going to get the uh, return data from there. So here, I'm just going to return the data from here. So this way, if users are set, that would be, we will see that uh, they will be fetched from Redis. If not, they will be set from Redis and then they will be returned. I'm going to cut this and I put it here. Okay, now it's time to test it. So here as well. Now I just copy the endpoint go to our app and here I put it here okay this time we're just calling that here I'd say just want to see here console.log and paste it here we did update the server.js for this particular uh, endpoint so we need to restart the server so I say restart it okay now let's go to the postman now i need to update the endpoint before that so just copy the endpoint go there paste it okay it's a get hit it and we get error let's see what it is okay my bad when i copied the code i did not see that it is a it's supposed to be get and here we are also saying get but it was post there so i corrected it now we need to restart the server again so let's do that Control c run it again go back postman hit it and we get error okay x use is not defined so i think i forgot to import it sorry about that so you go here on top we need to import x use so Import X use from X use. Now let's try again. Postman hit it. Result OK. Hit it. OK. All right. Now let's see. So what I do, I go here and refresh. And if I go to users. Is, uh, we're getting okay but the data is not getting set so if I go here in users the object is empty let's go back here to our code and here where we are working on our method here what do we want to do we want to check here like what is happening so here users we are getting and then the string by so here we say console.log and now we should see what is happening so i keep this window open and here let's hit it with the postman okay guys so first thing i refresh here and here we don't have users right so if we call it is it is going to return us null 
So what I can do here is I'm gonna check here if data is null. So here if not equal to null, that means we have data in Redis, then return that data. Otherwise go into else statement. Else statement will go to this endpoint and then we are calling users. Instead of calling users here, I would say uh, API call and here, let me copy that and I'm gonna put here and I say here Redis called okay so we can see now users come here and I'm gonna pass users as it is and these are 10 users for now let's see how it, how it works and then once the data returns it returns the same way and here the same way okay so we save it as I updated it in our code uh, here I'm calling it and console logging it. So let's see. So here I go and I clear it and I run the server again. Then go back to the Postman and here I hit get. Okay, so we get API called and uh, here I see empty. Okay, now if I go here. Let's say we have users to not refresh and we don't have users. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to return uh, so for setting it I need to pass here json dot stringify alright now the users will be set like that and whatever response we get let's see what happens so okay so what we need to do here is we need to put here a wait first of all so we need to wait for the response once we get the response second thing i'm getting a user single user data now and the third thing we need to do when we have a wait so this function needs to be a sync so here pause Async. So we are waiting for it. Now save it and now as I updated server file, I go back here. Now here it should give us the console log as well because I'm console logging here. Okay, so now let's see. So if I go to the postman and hit it and uh, now let's go to the API call. We don't have anything, anything there. Refresh users yeah it's still empty guys so behind the scenes i did add some changes here so let's have a look so i added a wait so we are waiting for json uh, placeholder url to send us the data for a single user that goes to response now make sure your this response and this response is not same if you use here let's say response it is going to give you an error here so the response is there and we can console log it as well now i'm going to remove this console log from here so we can see that we are redis called and api called so if there is data we will have api redis called if it is fetched from redis if it is kept fetched from api it is going to print api called now here i'm passing json stringify and i'm returning the response dot data so whatever response of data is going to be there now if I go to the website, uh, here placeholder, so back, so if you see here, their script works that way, they return response. And uh, as I was going for users, if I go for users slash one, we get this much data. So we, are, we need to stringify it before saving it. So that's why I'm stringify it and storing it. All right, so now currently if I go to the Redis, refresh, we don't have any user data here. So users is missing. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go to Postman. And before that, make sure that server is running. So I'm gonna clear it and run it again. Now the server is running and here I hit send. So we get result okay. Now I go to here, refresh. Now you see users and then we have data. Click here and we get the whole data. User, name, username, everything. So if I go to our application 
so we are picking some of it because this user data uh, we are picking id name and email so you get the id it is picking straight away now the main thing that we need to check here so here i go to okay so i'm gonna put it side by side so we can see the difference all right so here and i'm gonna minimize this so let's see so I, what i'm gonna do we're gonna go and open the insights and here i'm gonna delete the user so currently users are not present in redis right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get the user and we get that we got the user using api called and how much time it took 105 milliseconds now i hit it again this time it is redis called and if you notice the time here only seven milliseconds so you get the idea how fast it becomes now you are seeing the data this way you can fetch it according to your needs the main point is you can save a lot of time and a lot of resources for some particular type of data and you can store in redis and use it so i hope you got the understanding how you can use in your applications hope you like this video see you in the next one do subscribe for more videos like this thank you for watching Thank <laughs> you.